Hi everybody, it's Alejandra with the Osceola Library System and welcome to the last day of DIY December. Today I'm going to teach you how to make these watercolor um, bookmarks that will make great little stocking stuffers for the reader in your life for this holiday season. So what you're going to need to make this project is some watercolor, obviously. Um, this is the Arteza watercolor paint set. I got this on Amazon. You'll need some paint brushes, any kind will do. Um, some water, some watercolor paper, obviously, and, and then optionally um, a hole punch and some twine or ribbon to tie a little bit of um, a little bit of a ribbon on your bookmark and some napkins in case you need some cleanup. So I think that's about it. We can get started. So I already cut my watercolor paper. So the regular size for a bookmark is either two by six. So that's this little one or two and a half by eight and a half. That's the bigger one. So I've already pre-cut these in just some regular watercolor paper. And you could also paint them and then cut them afterwards. It's up to you. And then I have my little bookmark here that I'm going to get started with. And go ahead and just wet your brush. I'm going to start with this sort of rose pattern. I feel like this one looks really, really pretty and it looks much more difficult than it actually is. So I'm going to wet my brush and just dip into whatever color you prefer. I'll go ahead and dip into a red and then just just very well saturate your brush in the paint so you get a nice opaque color so you want like more paint than water. And then just start the center of the rose kind of with these little comma type shapes I guess. It's a little bit hard to describe it's like these wiggly comma shapes. And like this is one of those things that at first doesn't look great but then once you continue it looks a lot better. So I'm going to dip in a little bit of water just to dilute the paint and then just continue with bigger comma shapes. And you can make them like more wiggly and then you're pretty much just going to do this and continue to dilute the watercolor. And if you do feel like you have maybe too much water, you can go ahead and dab it off on a napkin, which I have here, and just keep adding some more water. Okay. And since this is kind of more of an abstract flower, it really is okay if it's a little bit messy or maybe it doesn't quite look like a rose, because I mean, it is an abstract type flower. And I'm just going to go back and maybe dilute a little bit of the petals here that I think are a little bit too dark. Yep, and then just pretty much keep going until you're out of paint. So I'm going to go ahead and do another one. So there's that in pink and then I did it kind of more of a red. Do one more. So I'll do maybe like a little one here. So like I said, your comma shape. And I'm not I'm not a professional, I'm more of like a like a hobbyist, so I'm sure if you know of a better method of doing this, feel free to do that. I just like the look of these more abstract roses. I'm gonna go ahead and start diluting the color so it's a little bit more watery and less paint. And we keep doing our comma shapes. And I'm gonna dilute it a little bit more. And then I kind of just get more heavy handed on the outside, like pressing a little bit harder. And then just fill in some of those white spaces. And then I went and cleaned my brush with some water and then go ahead and move on to the leaves. Let's see, you can go ahead and pick like a dark green and again, kind of get a nice opaque color on there. And then I find leaves to be very, very easy, like not super hard, especially if you have like a pointed brush. So you're gonna go ahead and like do the tip and then press hard. Go. So 
more gentle at the top and then push. And that's pretty much how you make these more pointed leaves. And then I might gently do. Okay, and I'm just getting a little bit more paint. And then maybe I'll put some leaves over here where there's some more white space. Okay, and then in this one, I did make them a little bit more, I guess, jagged around the edges, kind of how like rose leaves are. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Or you could just leave them as is, either way. And I think this kind of makes it look a little bit more abstract too. Okay. And then you can obviously add in more leaves, more embellishments if you want, but I'm just gonna leave mine like that. And then go ahead and tie your twine once it's dry. Okay, and then I'm gonna quickly show you how to do this one. This one's just pretty much a basic like leaf pattern that I did over and over again. So for this one, I'm gonna dip into maybe like a, let's start with a dark blue, why not? Okay, so same thing, I'm gonna do quite a bit of paint. And then you want to do like a flowy line just to get started. So like a nice thin flowy line. You can certainly do this with a skinnier brush if you feel more comfortable. So like that, that's fine. And then just start your leaf shape. So I'm gonna do like a pointed leaf shape first. And you can definitely like add water in places where maybe you want the paint to be more diluted, like to give it a, a bunch of different shades of blue. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more paint. And this is that same technique. You want to be very light at the tip and then push. Very light and then push. Yeah. And then, like, my leaves don't always come out all perfectly the same, but I think, again, that's okay. Because it kind of just adds to that more abstract type of look. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and just clean that off and then maybe add a lighter green. That could be fun. And then I'm going to do these more like rounded type leaf shapes. And the same thing, I'm just going to do like a flowy line maybe to start this one if it's okay, if it's overlapping. This one I kind of just make like the rounded tip and then push down. Like rounded tip and then continue with the rest of my shape. You can get super, super creative with this and do different shapes, different leaves, different colors. And definitely personalize it to whoever you're gonna give it to, use their favorite colors too. Okay, and then I pretty much just continue doing that same thing with different leaf shapes, like this sort of spotted one. If you did want to learn more about um, watercolor, we do have these books at the library, Watercolors for Everyone, and then Watercolor 101. This is a great one for beginners. It has a lot of like project ideas for when you're just starting. So you can go ahead and pick up those if you want to learn a little bit more about watercolor. Thanks so much for joining me, everybody. Our next crafty program is going to be January 6th at 2 p.m., where I'll be teaching you the basics of paper coiling. Make sure you check out our website, osceolalibrary.org, for more information about our services and our programs. Thanks so much. See you next time.